Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here and uh, to meet you all here. It's a big, very nice event. I'm first time in Poland uh, on a such kind of big event. And uh, thank you for invitation. And uh, let's start. Let's start diving into the perfect, beautiful world of IoT. And we will add some taste of scientific. So let me ask you a few questions for the warm up. So, who are uh, software developers here? Can you raise the hands? OK, good. This is technical stage. So who is familiar with the embedded firmware development? OK, I see one, two, three. OK, good, guys. Thank you. And also, um, who is a business guy? Who is uh, doing business talking to the clients? One, OK. OK, oh, talking to the clients, yeah. So uh, thank you for your answers. And let me introduce myself, why I'm here, and what is my career path. It's happening that uh, from 2004 to till 2009, I'm working in embedded world for uh, microcontrollers, for assembler, C, C++, all this embedded world. And before that, nobody called it IoT. It was embedded. But now the world changed. And we will talk a little bit why, what is the difference between embedded and IoT. And later on, I, I start working with Android. I changed from embedded to Android development. So I also firmware developer and mobile developer. So I know what is the Scrum, Sprints, and all other things. But uh, one year ago, I started working in R&D center as R&D head. So what we're doing this, we're doing innovation for our company and our clients. And my work very close related to IoT, big data, and artificial intelligence. So in our lab, we bootstrapping new kind of software, new kind of uh, ideas, combining all together. And today, we will talk about that. What is the IoT? What is the, so just, I, will, I would like to explain from my understanding the term of IoT. What is that? Existing types of IoT, because we can say Internet of Things of, of everything, but we should be more precise in the definition. Smart cities, this is a big step to the future. This is a trendy, very trendy nowadays, and uh, we will talk a little bit about that. And what is actually narrow networks and how it can be connected to the real devices? And of course, I will give you a small tour because there is no time, totally no time to dive into the coding, but I will just highlight the tooling set, what we use in our lab for this new kind of projects. And let's start, start talking about the types. So we have, I want to highlight six, the major, what I see from my perspective, six major types of IoT. This is smart homes. So smart homes, ecosystems, everything what in your home, in your apartment. This is wearable devices, oral, Fitbit, smart watches, at least your mobile phone, this is wearable. You wear this every day. Everyone has a smartphone, I assume. Connected devices. So connected devices, that's something that's now in your home, but it's not connected to your network. I think it's a toaster, it's a mixer, it's a, all your environments in the kitchen or in your car. But this is like everything that we can imagine. But something that we cannot imagine, this is industrial automation. This agriculture in smart cities, how big they are, how, what are the, how many devices in these solutions. And let's start, talk, before we start talking, why it's important for each of you, because you're developers and you want to know what's happening in the next five years. This is marketing research of uh, Deloitte, and they highlight the most growing industries. So till uh, next five years, you see the yellow, this is manufacturing and natural resources. Poland and Ukraine, this is agricultural country. So we have the huge fields where we grow the food. And this field will grow significantly. You can see the numbers almost twice or three times more till the end of 2020. So we should dive into this development. So how many guys write, write software for the farmers? No? This is a question, but they, they're waiting for that. And uh, the farmers is very interesting industry. Why? Because they need not only software, they need as well hardware. So this is a very nice combination of all these things. And utilities, government, healthcare, transportation, this is industry which just, you cannot imagine how big they are in US. So how big uh, this um, 
interest. How hot is it? And of course, we're doing our products, but uh, mainly we outsource. And in a few years, this trend will come here. They will asking for outsource, and we should be ready for that. So we should know what is the technical stack for that uh, areas and so on. And let's start reviewing. So the smart homes. I think everyone familiar with this picture. This is a very popular Huey lamp or something else. Like you can control via Bluetooth the lighting and decorate your room according to your taste. So this is nothing. I cannot surprise you with that. So everyone maybe saw or even buy this device. Wearable gadgets. That's uh, where we have. This is trend of previous year. All uh, all uh, SaaS companies which demonstrate their products on a SaaS exhibition show something. Uh, uh, I would say very f uh, close to wearable devices like a brushless, but it's a smart locks, smart gadgets. You see, for example, this one. This is a, you can share the access code with your friends, and you can lock your bike in the city, and your friend can unlock this bike. And uh, you know, this very widely used in a of, uh, in offices in hotels when you come in with a, your card. So this is kind of automation, and it means your door know who come in. So today in my hotel, hotel, talk to me. So what do you want? I say, wow, <laughs> come on. And uh, but this is something new. This is uh, how say new trend of connected devices. This is smart tea spot, which d were designed in uh, San Francisco, which connected to the cloud, which understand it, it, this tea spot prepare the very the, the number one in the world Chinese tea. You know, this Chinese tea ceremony is very expensive and very hard to learn how to make a right, proper tea. But with this machine, they, they program more than 1,000 receipts, uh, this, uh, how to do this. And you can do this ceremony in your home with your friends. And machine automatically order the tea from the store. When tea is over, it's automatically ordered. And you just get a notification in your mobile. So that means your T will be, how say, T port connected to internet and talking to internet. So it's smart. And of course, of course, you sleep. One, 33% of your life you sleep. This is huge importance because you can extract a lot of data out of that. And how we use this data? Nobody know. But doctors in US already interesting. They say, we would like to utilize all this information in a cloud, in the storage. But uh, there is no, this empty market, so nobody provides solution for deep sleep analysis, for uh, sleep behavior, for sleep. So this is like an example how our connected devices can help to analyze your life. And this is one example how we apply this approach for one of our clients. So you can say this is something in the US or in Europe, very far from the Poland and Ukraine. No, this is in Ukraine and in Poland we design the uh, real project where the guys come to us with a s small night vision camera and say, this is just night vision camera. What we can do more? I say, let's connect it. Let's connect it to mobile, transfer the video, and share the video, do image processing on top of the video on the, your mobile, because we have lack of resources in the camera. And the clients say, whoa, it's a new kind of device. So this is like we, we can compete with our other guys on the market. So th this is how we help the guy transform his just offline camera to online solution. And now we can say this is IoT transformation. And this is an example of real connected device. So we connect device to the, to the cloud. And you can ask, OK, where is the scale? Where is a million devices? Because uh, everyone in the world talk that uh, in a few years we will see the billions of devices. This is, this is billion of devices. So each component of this machine, which will, connect, which will be connected to the cloud and which will report the status, status of uh, operational. Because you see, this is a very huge, big piece of electronics. And we need to know what's happening inside. But we start talking from the farmer's industry. And from farmer's industry, you see, OK, where is the electronics on the farm? Who knows the application for the farmers with electronics? OK. I will show you. This is smart, smart uh, bee house where they can like the honey. And why it's a pure? Because uh, the big problem for farmers to know how much honey inside this house. What is the honey quality? How much honey collected during the months? 
how be live inside. So they, and they design very simple solutions. They just measure the weight of the whole house and calculate the trend, how much honey grow inside. And when it's ready, they just come there, no need to additional check, just come there, open, and get your honey, fresh honey. You can, and you can estimate, you can deliver to the end clients next week. So this is really one of the applications for, for agriculture sector. But uh, what's the, the trend of this year, I just back from US uh, one week ago, a big trend is uh, smart cities. So everyone in US now running around the streets and say, oh, it should be smart, it should be smart. This array things project starts one year ago, and they raised three million bucks for just idea to make New York City part of the New York City smart. So what they propose, they propose collect temperature, humidity, SpO2, uh, uh, SCO2 level, uh, voice vibration, noise radiation, all parameters which they can even collect. You see the 10 terabytes data per day generated. And later on, say, okay, we will, first year we will collect, later on we will analyze. And one of the applications, they say, we will just identify the areas where is the most healthy for runners. So if you run in the morning, you will know where, is the, where this area is most convenient for you. But this is, was a concept one year ago. And this year, I saw a lot of beautiful ideas for smart cities. And uh, one of them was our team idea. So we, we decided to uh, raise your hand who knows what is that. So it's AED. So this is automated emergency defibrillator. It's mounted to the wall, and if somebody had heart attack or heart arrest, it fall down like this, and you attach electrodes and save the life. But problem is when you, some people don't know what to do, so they can attach these things to the body and can shock the body. But what next? And we decide to make it online. We decide to make, connect this to the cloud and uh, uh, tell the hospitality, so something happened in the city, please come and help. And this is our solution. We just grab the, our uh, own hardware, which measure pulse and heart rate, connect to Intel Edison board with a special Predix virtual machine. So hardware running on the Java virtual machine. <laughs> this other, so it's up to the questions. You can ask the question later on, what is that? And we connect uh, Amazon Alexa, which can talk. You can ask Alexa, everything is OK? She say, yes, stay, please stay calm. Emergency on your way. And we use the um, already, so for a smart cities, the problem is there is very expensive to design everything from the scratch. So they want to reuse some already existing ecosystems. And that's why we use General Electric's current system for a smart traffic, inf uh, for city traffic information, for images, uh, public safety. So on the, each bulb, they have a camera, and they can extract this image from the camera. So this is our architecture of the solution. So we take um, Amazon Alexa, Intel Edison, put all together, create smart aid, which talk to the people, connect to the cloud, uh, send the time series data in real time, this cardio signal to the cloud, utilize uh, public information from the streets, what's happening in this location, uh, use Pitney Bow technology. This is something American startup for uh, transfer geocoding into the addresses, but it's very similar to Google. And we use uh, Cisco Spark Channel. It's an enterprise solution. As a, it's like a Slack, but for enterprise. And we send all data to these channels, and every doctor who is subscribed for the channel receives immediately information. So on this location, with this situation on the roads, with this image video from the street, something happening. And of course, we have an Android app developed for an ambulance, for emergency. So as you shock the body, everyone knows that something happened in the city. They know where to go. So this is kind of what is the IoT for us, so how we integrate all together. And uh, now I want to just highlight a little bit what is the narrow networks and how it's connected to what I said before. So artificial intelligence, many, many of you heard about the chatbots from Facebook, Google dive into the, you know, the speech recognition, image detection, all this very heavy technology utilize narrow networks. So who, who, who knows whether that? So I, I can dive more details or less? OK. So each, each round circle here is a function, real function, mathematical function, which get one input, do some mathematical operation, and take output. So 
As an input, it could be a binary image like a picture of your cat. As output, it, should, it could be text that this is a cat or not. So, or uh, some probability index like 100% or zero. And with that engine, we can very easily uh, sort images, what we see on the street. For example, do we see the human or do we see the cat? It's easy because we need to know if we have some motion detector in our hardware, we need to know who is that. Is it human or is it animal? And uh, for that, this is just we install in our office uh, some uh, object tracking system which utilizes OpenCV uh, libraries written on Python. And uh, we just uh, track, track the people. So we tried maybe 15 algorithms written on C, C++, Python, and eventually happened that so Python for embedded worked much better. So we recommend you to take a look on the OpenCV Python framework for image processing. So you can up and run this uh, system in your home. And, uh, but the machine learning connected to the, uh, to the hardware is much more powerful. So we also designed the system where we can identify the person. So we detect the face and do matching. So we do matching with the pattern. So we have the, how say, I forget the word. Uh, so in our database, we have the profile photo. And we get the uh, snapshot from the video and match according to machine learning uh, algorithms. And we, we can uh, identify who they are. Is it Igor, or is it Yuri, or is it me? But uh, the problem is here that it's very, very resource consumption. So to run this, we need a special hardware with GPU, because it, this all neural networks consume not CPU power, it's consume core power. So you need to calculate. So as much cores you have, as faster your solution are. And uh, we apply this um, so for I, I told you that I like hackathons, and we participate some garage 48 hackathon, and some Friday evening we decide, okay, what we can how we can combine machine learning and hardware. And we designed this cocktail mixer, like uh, which mix the drinks. Our original idea was mix whiskey cola, <laughs> but this is juice mixer. Uh, and you, you just authorize with your mobile, and we learn, we collect the data from your Facebook, from your Twitter, from your all resources, and we know what, what do you like, how you like. So, for example, I'm a, I like whiskey. My friend, he's a healthy guy, he don't drink alcohol. So, for him, it's just a juice. For me, it's a whiskey and a juice. For somebody, it's no juice, just whiskey. And you see the map, so we mix on an iForum in Ukraine, in, in a Microsoft stand, we in a partner with them. We mix the drinks for participants. We mix almost 200 drinks during the day, and we collect the statistic, the proportions. How, what do the people drink? You can see this cocktail proportion of juices. So now, we, now is a, this is a question. What to do with this data? How to analyze this? And how we detect the person? So uh, for example, your age, we, we take into account age, your um, status, like married, not married, and we we, we suggest person, so, okay, your body is like you, with your parameters, like this type of juice. Do you want to try? And, you know, my team really surprised me. I just come to the room. They developed this two, two days, and at the end of the day, they say, okay, Boris, please answer three simple questions. Do you like sweet? Do you like herb? And I answer and say, okay, press the button. I say, press the button. And they make me a very nice cocktail. With a, it was a banana juice, uh, apple juice, and a grape or something. It was, I never tried such thing because it's, it's, it's unofficial. It's like, like you cannot order this in a bar because nobody knows how to mix. But this machine just invents something for you according to some mathematician logic. So if you're interested in this machine learning, this is what I would like to highlight. This is TensorFlow, for example. This is very big, powerful open source library from a Google team. They say, there is no more time to make something corporate. We just open to the world all our tools. And OpenCV, we utilize for this image tracking. TensorFlow is a clear machine learning and deep learning engine with a lot of ready, uh, up, uh, ready to go libraries. You can just uh, install TensorFlow, take a look on the libraries, examples, and go through the tutorial, and next day you can start innovation of your algor algorithms. You start teach your machine, do something for you. So NVIDIA, QDNN, so this is projects for 
uh, working with uh, CUDA drivers for, uh, to, 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 to make your algorithm faster. Of course, Project Oxford from Microsoft is, can help you to detect the face emotions on, in real time. They have an API, so you can utilize this in your projects. And um, just back a little bit to the connectivity, because Internet of Things is all about the connectivity and different protocols. And you can see here, so I highlight five of them. This is, uh, I can say Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is very, very well known because it's in our mobile. If you do something for human, when we consume this, you should work with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. But if you work with uh, some machine-to-machine -machine communication, this is interesting. It's, this is, it could be LoRa, it can be Sigfox, LT network, or whatever. So we have some, now we have some protocols which have 100 kilometer range. You can communicate over the cities. So machine can talk to other machine without your help. The speed, of course, is a few bytes. But that's, that's something that you need to go through. And if you want to start, so, so why, why I'm talking about protocols? Because um, software is not interesting anymore. Of course, business solution with all these pretty nice UI is still important. But more and more our clients say, can you do connectivity from your mobile to this device, to that device? And next five years or 10, I'm expecting that all products will, will be connected to different products. And how they connect, this is a question of communication protocols. So please be prepared. Take a look on this. And of course, as you work over software, you, you, you can investigate and be prepared a little bit more. These big giants already announced their uh, IoT connectivity platforms. I forget put here Microsoft, but they just, just released uh, IoT Hub as well. So Microsoft also in this club. All big sharks pointed to the IoT solution world. And uh, please, please take a look, because this is maybe next. So you, everyone heard about Docker, and now Docker came to the embedded. So next year, I will t tell you about the Docker on an embedded platform. And this is very cool. And all these guys support this idea how you can up and run a container in an embedded machine. So please go through the IoT of these guys and take a look what you can do with that solutions. Thank you, guys. And we can do more. We can do more with this, I can say, perfect IoT world. And I would, I would like, with a big pleasure, answer your questions, like uh, some technical, if you would like. because. I, I, I strongly believe that I cannot dive into the coding during the 20 minutes, but I strongly believe that I can give you motivation to do something new, innovate or dive into this IoT world. Thank you. Thank you, Boris. We have one question from Ola. Uh, how do you convince more tech-resistant uh, industries with IoT potential, for example, farming, uh, to invest in new tech solutions? In, in what? Uh, to invest in new tech solutions. How do you convince them? Uh, OK. I, I will just highlight one thing. So in, in Kyiv, we are now talking with Intel Ukraine to do partnership, strong partnership, because they're hardware producer and we hardware integrator. and. We would like to design a small demo for a kernel. Maybe this is from Poland, because I saw this. this is kernel It's a big uh, farmer concern, uh, industry or uh, company. And we have the big offices in Kiev. We have the, a lot of big farmers in Ukraine, and, as well as in Poland. And these guys, they're waiting for cases. So they say, OK, show me what, how we can do this. So we don't know. This is new world. And we say, OK, we, we, we will show you what we can do. So like with this honey pot, we will sit with them, just listen to them, what are the, their major problem. For example, animal tracking or something else. And we will design some, some, some small prototype. So all IoT start from small prototype, and after that is grow. So that's how we do. So we do POC, proof of concept. And as soon as they're happy, they say, OK, we can implement this in our business. That's. Okay, thank you very much, Boris. Please give an applause.